All right, y'all, welcome back to another segment. Now, today I'm gonna go ahead and show you how I'm gonna fix this area here. If you're wondering, why is this area dead? What this is, this is Bermuda grass that was invading my Palmetto St. Augustine, and I did a video showing you that there's a new chemical combination out that you can spray to kill the Bermuda in the St. Augustine. The biggest mistake I made is I did it late in the season here, and uh, my Palmetto St. Augustine has been stunted to the point, not only from the herbicides, but also from the cold weather and shorter days, that it's just not gonna be able to fill in. This is a giant area anyway. And so last week I showed you I was gonna go ahead and sod, but the sod came and it was unacceptable. So I rejected it, sent it back. And now what I've done is gone ahead and headed out to the farm to get some grass plugs. They're called sod pods. I'll give you a link below to them. I got these directly from Bethel Farms and I got Palmetto St. Augustine grass plugs or sod pods. And I'm gonna show you how to plant those in here and get those moving. And then we'll work along over the next few weeks or months to see how long it takes for them to fill in. Now, again, you can get these online. I'll give you their website address. They didn't sponsor this, but they did give me this for free. I tried to pay for them. They wouldn't let me do it, but either way, I'll give you a link to them. You could also pick these up at local your local Ace or other big box store, but let me just show you what they look like here. Well, I think this will be easier. The reason they're grown together like that is because of the stolons. And that's the reason why plugs can work. They don't really make plugs for cool season grasses. So there you go. The reason these are all tied together is because of these stolons. And that's what makes these so useful is because of the way that Southern grasses spread, warm season turf, they spread with rhizomes and stolons. And the reason these are all knitted together is because just like they do in your lawn, well, not there, over there, the stolons have knitted together in here, but these trays keep them separate. So you can easily separate them, just use a machete. Probably not a good idea to do it on the concrete overbiter. But anyway, there you go. And now what this is, it's like a mini little lawn and it's ready to be planted. It's got a full root system and everything. All you gotta do is plant it in the ground and it'll immediately start to send out stolons to spread in thin spots. Now, there are some advantages to plugs over sod. The first thing is, is when you invest in sod, you have to buy 400 square feet at a time because that's what a pallet of sod covers. And you have to have that delivered. Most of you don't have a way to get a giant pallet of sod home. And you know, you saw the, the, the challenge I ran into. And then another advantage is when you get sod, you have to install it right away or it will dry out. With these, these can live in those trays for weeks as long as you keep them watered and so you're not kind of up against the gun and getting it done if you go with the sod pods or the plugs now of course i'm going to plant these and you're going to see the disadvantage is you don't have an immediate lawn with sod this would be an immediate lawn with these i have to wait until they grow together and so i've got some work to do with them i got to fertilize them and push them with sea kelp to make them grow together quicker and that's going to be part of what we're going to monitor uh, you and i together over the next few weeks is because we are in the slow season. So it's gonna be a little slower for those to spread. If this was the spring, I bet you this whole area would fill in within six weeks. But because we're going into the winter right now, I have no idea what kind of cold temperatures we're gonna get. We're already getting shorter days. That's gonna slow them down, as I mentioned, but the cold temperatures will also hit at some point. But either way, that's why you're subscribed, right? So you can see how long is it gonna take for these sod pods, these plugs to fill in this area. Now, let me show you how to plant them. Real quick too, I just wanna show you, see right there, you can see sod pods palmetto so they'll be listed so when you go to and again i recommend you try to get these locally maybe like at ace or something like that and you'll see that's how you'll know what variety you're getting and that's why i knew i was getting palmetto now again i got these direct from the farm but i just wanted to show you they are listed where you get them okay now as far as prepping the ground first i guess this is another advantage if you were going to sod you would have to bring in a sod cutter and cut all of this out because sod comes with about an inch to an inch and a half, sometimes two inches of soil with it. And if you were to just set it on top of this, it'd be sitting two inches higher than your current grass. So you have to bring in a sod cutter and cut it all out. If you looked at my Bahia grass project that we just did, that's what we had to do there was cut out some areas. With these, you don't have to do that. And in fact, you wanna leave this dead Bermuda in here or whatever is around. Because even though this is dead, believe it or not, it's helping to still keep weeds from coming in because it's just structure that's in the way. If I was to take all of this out and open this up to bare ground, now the sun is beaming directly underneath there and just inviting whatever's underneath there to come up through. You can already see here, I've got opportunistic torpedo grass that's coming in. That's what that is. A lot of you will think that's St. Augustine grass, but that's not, that's torpedo grass. And it's just because this area is thinned out and it was under there and the grass was, you know, the grass that was here, which was a combination of St. Augustine and Bermuda was holding it back. But now that this is opened up, 
here it comes. See, and then there's the sun. The sun just invites these problems to come in. So I want to go ahead and keep that there. And I'm going to plant my plugs in between there. And don't worry, the stolons will get through it. The stolons are extremely strong. They are Sylvester stolons and they will get through anything, right? So that none of this dead stuff is going to stop anything. In fact, as it decays, it becomes organic material that's good for the soil and will help feed the pods. Now, there's two ways that I know of to plant these. The first one is the most common is you can go to a big box store and get one of these. I'll give you a link. They sell them on Amazon, but I really highly recommend you go to Ace, somewhere like that, and get one. And this goes on the Chucky or Drill. And then the other one is this. This is called a Yard Butler. They don't sponsor me or anything. I just found this on, on uh, Amazon years ago, and you can see it's a perfect square. Let me show you. It's the, it's the exact same size as the plug is. See that? Now I'll tell you, if you have extremely sandy soil, this won't work because really what you do is you shove this down in there. I really need to do two hands with this. See how it pulled out that perfect square right there? So now I've got a square right there, see? All I gotta do is take my plug. Now you'll see, you'll see this digs a little bit deeper than the plug itself. So you don't just wanna plop it in there. What I do is I take a little bit of the old dirt and I just crumble it up in the bottom like that. It's nice and loose. Take your sod pod pop it in, push it down, and you're done. You can walk away from it. Now, I have some clay in my soil, and it's also wet right now, so it's holding together. If you're doing this in dry, super sandy soil, maybe out by the beach, this won't work because it won't be able to pull that square out so perfectly like I just did. And so that's where this tool will come in. If you guys ever watched my old St. Pete property project, this is the exact one I use. So it's a little bent. You can see how it's got a little hitch in the giddy up there. So, but all you got to do here now just go straight down in and just bam now i went a little deep but you can see it makes a nice little hole there right oh look at that good black dirt it's from all those biostimulants i use same deal take your plug again i went a little too deep so we're going to push some of the dirt back in there but then you just shove it down in there and there you go that's actually a little too deep. They're gonna feel a little recessed again because I have all this junk here, So they're, and these are flat. So they're already gonna be a little recessed. You definitely want them to be at the soil level though, soil line level. There we go. So that's two different ways to plant. I'm gonna go ahead and use the yard butler just because I like the perfect square that it makes. It's just, and it's a little bit cleaner. But again, that's, that's a good alternative too. Now, as far as spacing goes, you can go between 12 and 18 inches. I just did two examples there, so that's not, not proper. And really, I shouldn't have put this one so close over here because I have St. Augustine grass there. All this over here, you know, it's part of the strategy is going to move in. So I put that one too close to the edge, but that was just for that example. But 12 inches apart, obviously, it's gonna, you're going to fill in quicker. 18 inches apart, it's going to take longer. So I'm going to go with 12 inches because I've got four of those pods over there four trays and so that'll be enough to do this area here and a couple spots over down there So when you do two rows, you want to do kind of like a running bond, they call it, when you're doing tile work or bricks. So we got a row there, and then your second row you do in between. Running bond is what that's called. And I'm just eyeballing the spacing. Okay, one thing I do want to warn you of is this right here will pinch your skin really bad. And then the other thing is, you see me have to keep banging on it to get the plugs out. That does become a little painful on your hands after a while, but you can handle it.
probably would have been better to uh, separate these over closer to my work area. No one has ever accused me of being the most efficient worker in the world. Oh, one thing I forgot to, to do. It's a good idea to cross hatch or cut these roots just to wake them up because they're kind of pot bound like that. So I have this here with a serrated edge, but you could use a serrated steak knife if you really want to. But all you want to do is just give it and watch your hands. You just want to give it a little cut this way and a little cut this way. You don't need to go deep. It cuts both ways. Our love is like a knife. Anyway, you want to get a little cross hatch in there. And again, just to wake those roots up and stimulate them. So. All right, it's been a little while since I've done plugs. I will tell you that this method is much, much quicker and much, much easier because all you do is drill that hole, cut your plug, and stomp it in. Whereas the yard butler seems cool because it's a perfect square and all that, but it's just, you don't need to be that precision with it. So either one works, but I'm just telling you, if you're looking for the quickest way to do it, just drill holes, like Tony Beats used to say, drill holes, drill holes, drill holes, stomp them in and be done. <laughs> These got a little close together over here, but <laughs> it is what it is. All right, there we go, all planted. Now I'll give this a, a little cut so you guys can see a little bit better because it looks messy, which is fine. I don't care, it's all material. This is all material that's gonna melt back into the lawn, all good natural stuff, but go ahead and give it a little cut just to clean it up some. By the way, here's what the plugs look like after I cut. Let's see if you can see them from this angle. Can you see them all in there? Yeah, you can see them. They're not perfect, but they're in there. All right, now you wanna know what do you wanna put on them to get them established. So you'd think about starter fertilizer, and that's fine. If you have starter fertilizer, you can put that down. But really, as far as fertilizer goes, I may more care about nitrogen, because I wanna push stolons, and nitrogen is gonna push stolons. As far as rooting goes, you could use, you want sea kelp, basically. And so you can use CK, but it, most of you are on my program, you're already gonna have RGS, so there's no need to buy CK. This is just highly concentrated sea kelp. This really should be sprayed from a backpack sprayer and watered in. Um, I wouldn't do it in a hose-in sprayer because it's just so concentrated. 
This is more made for a hose and sprayer. And like I said, most of you have this, so don't go and buy anything else. Now we're gonna go with the high rate on this, which is six ounces per thousand. This has sea kelp. It also has humic and fulvic, which is great for the soil. So this is gonna go down. And also as far as FERT goes, you know, flagship would be my choice because it's got the most nitrogen. I don't have any flagship today, believe it or not. <laughs> I could go to the warehouse and get it, I'm just lazy. So I'm gonna put down some soil fit, which is kind of like my, my version of uh, Ringer Lawn Restore, if you guys remember that. This is natural base, which some of you will really like. This also has a little bit of sea kelp in it, which is another reason I'm using it. And uh, it's also got protein hydrolysis, so that's gonna help with uh, the stress of those new plugs and it's gonna help stimulate growth. So a lot of good things in here. It's not super high nitrogen. You can put it down you know, at five or six pounds per thousand if you wanted more nitrogen, but I'm just gonna do the bag rate, which is three pounds per thousand. So it's only gonna give me a quarter pound of nitrogen, but I'll put a couple apps down back to back. So just keep in mind when it comes to plugs, sea kelp is the main thing for rooting and then nitrogen is the main thing to make them spread out. So we're gonna use this as what I have. And some of you like this. I think it, it makes a really nice color. By the way, the, the reason it's different than the uh, Ringer Lawn Restore, because it doesn't have, I think, I think Ringer's a 1006 maybe, but I have, this is natural based, but I also have some AMS, ammoniacal nitrogen, as well as a little bit of urea in here. So some synthetic nitrogen, which is gonna give you that extra push. So really you only need that. 8% nitrogen with that natural base plus some of the synthetic and it's going to give you a nice blast. By the way, I'm going to go ahead and treat the entire lawn, not just the plugs. Which is another reason I'm just using this because this is what I'm due for. This is one we do kind of in between the flagship and stress blend. It's, it's, a lot, it's like a cross between a fertilizer and a biostimulant. Also, it does not smell like success. It actually smells like spent grain from a brewery because it's natural based. So. Beautiful stuff. By the way, a lot of you told me to try this Zero G hose, so we're gonna give it a shot. I'd always thought it would take too much of the pressure out, but let's just see. I'm really happy with it as a hose so far. It does it, it lives up to what it says it's supposed to be, so that's good. All right, RGS, six ounces a thousand. This is a 2,000 square foot area out here. You will see me concentrating a little harder spraying a little more angry where the plugs are of course but we're going to go ahead and spray the whole lawn because i want the rest of the saint augustine to spread out as well that's part of the strategy here is we're trying to push the existing saint augustine at the same time which is why i'm using nitrogen fertilizer that kind of thing so i need uh, 12 ounces here so 12 is right there there we go Gonna fill up a little bit with a little bit with water first, and put in our concentrate, nice and easy. There we go. Should have been a bartender. Huh? That's a good pour right there, brother. Okay, let's go spray and pray. Okay, one thing I'll go over while you guys are watching me plant these here is a lot of people will ask, what if I took pieces of sod and cut those in squares? Could I make those into plugs? And the answer is yes. I actually tried that in St. Pete a few years ago and it works, but it's much slower because you gotta think, remember I showed you that plug, it's like a little cupcake. It's got its own full root system. It's actually a full, tiny little mini lawn. So because it has a root system already, it's, it's got the power to push out stolons to spread out immediately, which is what we want. If you were to take pieces of sod and cut those up, they still don't have a root system. So it's still gotta put most of its initial energy into rooting before it can spread out. So it's actually a lot slower. So that's why you wanna go with plugs rather than pieces of sod cut up into plugs. If you're gonna to go to all the trouble of cutting up sod, you might as well just re-sod in the first place. All right, y'all, so there you go. The last step here is to go ahead and water all of this in. And people are gonna ask, how much should you water? Well, again, these are little mini lawns. So really you just could water like you normally would, which is one and a half inches per week. And you're gonna break that up into three waterings of a half inch each time. So you're essentially gonna water every two days or so, maybe every third day. Now, 
In the beginning though, while they're just established here, I'm just gonna go ahead and water every day just by hand for the next week or so, just to make sure they're good. But after that, just put them on the normal watering schedule that you'll do for your lawn and you should be good to go. So with that, I hope this video has been helpful to you. I'm sure I didn't answer every single question, so leave those in the comments below. That will also help other people that are doing, going through and doing this. And with that, I hope you uh, have a great rest of your week and I'll see you in the lawn.